So I'll just put that to the core level. And so that's why it's down to three from four. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and then, okay, okay, for any, uh, let's see what you think of this. It's small. Oh, we'll zoom in. <laughs> yeah, it is trans contextual thinking, non linear yeah. thinking. Yeah. yeah. And, and also, that's nicely opposed to the. I, I like, because uh, like Dario's got SE as immersing in the present context. And so then you've got trans contextual thinking as the direct opposite, where it's mutually exclusive, those two things. Mm -hmm. And the same with NI and SI, because if we, def if we define SI according to the temperament, so if we define SI as like the essence of Guardian, as if it's a cologne or a perfume, and it's like, we would say that SI is about stabilizing the situation, doing things as they've been done before, because like that's stable that's solid so yeah uh, the tried so and SI, true. yeah yeah so si is about stability and ni is about development and development and stability again they're opposites and so this this is sort of like a ti argument you know where you want your definitions to be opposites uh of each other so uh and then uh again world is possibilities i think you especially see this with enfp actively exploring stuff and it's like why did you go to that country like it's like you hear it when you when you like with the nfps it's like that, why it's like because it's like the, their curiosity just drives them and it's like i think well oh that's dangerous why did you do that um but again the world is possibilities see that's how we know you're a sex <laughs> <laughs> that's that's fascinating yeah it's so when you get like yeah i mean when it's, when it's when you get like female enfps it's like why are you going to that country that is a dangerous country for a woman to visit and it's like yeah let's move on yeah but i'm not going to go into any detail i've done i've done i've been, I know, I I've, been I've been good can... jonathan i've not given details here we go no, no. again um well there's possibilities to explore so we've done that so assertive uh and again it's actively taking those opportunities oh i, I, I did it oh possibilities so i made a distinction between i had a discussion about this with shalina once about the difference between any and se when it comes to opportunities and it's how far away it is so for example an opportunity for se is oh someone's left their wallet i'll take that that's <laughs> that's an opportunity for um extroverted sensor especially estp my own father will take glasses if somebody leaves glasses spectacle oh all of them very good right um whereas opportunities for ne it's like something that's not yet concrete it's something that could be but not as far away as say ni which is more longer term planning uh oh, oh yes also i also talk about function pairs because they correlate to the Kersey things so for example ni with te is very different from ni with fe because ni with te is about objects and plans and projects whereas ni with fe is about um, relates to the diplomatic intellect of mentoring people so it's about psychological development and so a big i suppose so from a Kersey point of view you would be predisposed to helping people psychologically to mentor in them yeah yeah one of my favorite things to do yeah and so this is wonderful An another trait of ne is also like the because they generate so many possibilities sometimes they have a hard time picking one so it's like it's almost like they're all at equal weight and it's hard yeah. to choose <laughs> yeah and yeah. that and that also there's a correlation there with interaction style there's certain path do you know about the linda bones interaction styles joyce yeah I do. Right. Yeah. Excellent. So I um, did you ever think about the sort of like the functional, the function correlates to the interaction styles? Like, oh, I wonder which functions are involved in here to make. So what were your sort of thoughts on that? 
Yeah, it's 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 been a while. <laughs> so yeah, INFJs they have the chart the course fun, uh, style, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I I would reckon that to NI sometimes it's just it has a certain yeah. sense of knowing and it kind of can know how like future things yeah. will like yeah. play out. Yeah. And so, so and so um, so there are some patterns like the only directive feeling types. Are NFJs, and that's be, I think that's because of the NI, and it's like they're directed for the other person's good, because <laughs> it's like you know how to mentor them. So there's a context to their their, their directiveness, and the only informing types, the only informing thinkers are NTPs. And so we might, so we then think, okay, what's the functional reason for why NTPs are informing? Well, maybe it's because they don't know what the answer is. They don't know what direction to go in. So they're not going to force anyone to go down A when it's like, you've really got to go down path A when it's like, well, you could do A, you could do B, you could do C, you could do D, or, or you could change the subject to something else. <laughs> I would say this is a this video is a perfect example of an INTP doing a lot of informing. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> right. Um, so uh, also, so some interesting patterns that they notice. So... All of the NJs and STs are directive, and the NPs and SFs are informing. And so when you overlay that pattern with SJ, SP, NF, and NT, you then get to the same 16 types that Jung was describing. It's just that the split is different. So, for example, um, with NT and NF, the split is between NJ and NP, but with SP and SJ, the split is between ST and SF. And so, so people would say, oh, the Kersey temperaments are not symmetrical because you've got that cut where you, you, you where you cut it, where you, one of the cuts is between NF and NT, and then you, and then you don't go SF and ST, so it's like they'll say, that's an uneven cut. That's asymmetrical. We don't like asymmetricality. But the insurrection styles are also asymmetrical. But when you put those together, the asymmetricalities cancel out and you get to the same 16 types. Right. Um, yeah, I think I think that looking at things from different points of view, I think that would be, I would say that that's harmonizing uh, any. Uh, Anything. Here we go. Let me know because you both know NI much better than I do because I don't really know what it is. Um, <laughs> it's... No, do we? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I should have mentioned the unconscious. Darn it. Oh, yes, Joyce, because you know yeah. about NLP. I think NI is massively involved in hypnosis. What do you think? I think um, and NI is massively involved in NLP. <laughs> oh, yes. And you can see it with Grindo. And what I noticed is, okay, right, this is how an ISTP thinks. This is how a really smart ISTP thinks. And do you, do you know about the meta model as well? Can you uh, refresh me? <laughs> you know, the meta model, those things about communication where... Like, it, oh, it, yes, it, it, yes. It, yeah. So I, I, the, the kinds of things that the meta model doesn't like... It sounds like the kind of things that an ISTP doesn't like about an ENFP and the way they talk, where it's like NLP does not like complex equivalents. And where it's like, so it's NLP, so ENFP is going, oh, that's just like this. No, it's not. They're completely different. And then the ISTPs get angry at <laughs> the ENFPs for making the comparison. And that sort of fits any polar, where the ISTP does not like. So, like, like I said, so would you say that one of the tenets of the meta model is they, they want to keep things separate. They don't want to make odious comparisons. Each context is, should be separate because it's all got its specifics. And if you just look at commonalities, you lose the specifics of the context. I think that's sort of like the ethos of NLP because it, a lot of it is, I see, I see the, I see the valued functions of STP is at play when I look at NLP. Like all the SE stuff, you got to focus on the moment, all that sort of stuff. The um, focusing on body language, the congruency, being in the moment, that sort of stuff. Um, also, FE valuing as well in like mirroring other people. 
and like you know in order to gain rapport it's like a surface kind of rapport isn't it by just mirroring the other like not like literally their body language or their breathing pattern or their energy level or the, the keywords that they use very effy um uh so yeah i can see the tie and also they have like they, the way they talk about the unconscious it's like it's this like great wonderful thing you can see that they are in love with ni that's a sort of the the impression i get with nlp like they're always banging on about unconscious competence and it's like yeah you can really see it there's an istp like writing a love letter to ni and then their whole model of how ericsson worked um Oh, got a book for you. Uh, have you read Ericsson's book called My Voice Will Go With You? No. Okay, it's got all of it. It's got a lot of his teaching tales in there, and you can actually see his hypnotic patterns at play. But most of it is just really good, like meta use of metaphor, and it's got some funny, funny, funny jokes in there as well. Right. This is fascinating. Yeah. So audience members, this is a really good example of extroverted intuition, bouncing ideas off of others to kind of gain more in intuitive insight. <laughs> but then the thing is like me and Jonathan were NI users. So we're like, yeah, Ben, <laughs> okay. it, it takes us a while. Like uh, we're a little slower with bouncing ideas. Um, and uh, there's this really interesting thing you do. Like, so Ben, you'll have a new thought and you'll go like, and also, you'll 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 preface a new thought with that. And I'm like, that's so any. -E. <laughs> well, yeah. we could change up the pace a bit. Maybe you've got a sort of like an NI question for Jonathan. I don't wish to uh, burn you out. No, this is great. I, I love yeah. all of this. Yeah. yeah. NLP is is very NI in the sense that like NI tends to be one of the things that it's ascribed to is seeing the patterns in its own mind and in other people's minds. Um, and NLP is good at understanding how how the mind is 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 as a abstract concept i don't know that i don't know if i'm explaining this well <laughs> and i being put on the spot yeah it's <laughs> okay um, yeah nlp is like it, it took me a long time to get to a point where i could talk about nlp because it's like lots of little separate techniques and it's like and, and i'm still at that point with enneagram where i really can't talk about enneagram in an articulate way because I, I don't have enough understanding I don't have enough. I don't feel I understand it in enough depth. Uh, Enneagram. Um, whereas Jonathan, very good at talking about Enneagram. Uh, and he has the knowledge of the Jungian type. So he knows how it varies, for example. So, for example, Jonathan can talk about a six and know how it varies by Jungian type. And we did a, we did a series in 2019, three events. How does the six vary by Kersey temperament? Because when you read the six descriptions, they sound too Guardian. And so we did, what, what does an NF6, and it was actually Janae's idea, an INFJ6. And she wanted to know, okay, what, do, what does an NF, NF Enneagram 6 look like, an NT Enneagram 6, an SP Enneagram 6, and an SJ Enneagram 6. Um, and so I think that's useful out there for, for, for we E6s that aren't Guardians. Um, oh, also yeah i didn't also go on joyce yeah your any is like and also it's amazing i love it and then you'll connect it to an another ne a desperate field like nlp and you'll go like oh it reminds me of this and it's amazing yeah but, but I mean, I, yeah go on oh yeah uh so i want to add a bit to ni so you wrote archetypes so yeah ni is associated with archetypes because i, I kind of see ni as seeing the cycles of things it can see the broader cycle of how things will play themselves out so it it's predictive in that sense. Everything has an archetype. Archetype is a cool way of saying like broad pattern. And if you understand that broad pattern, you that underlying meaning, then you can infer like how it's going to play out in the future. So because like you told me, Ben, NI in Socionics is called time. And so it's able to know how patterns play out in time. Yeah. 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 And uh I initially changed that to, I was going to call it intuition of change. But then I realized Victor misunderstood me. But, but it, it was in a way that was um, legitimate because change could also mean like 
oh, A to B, like sudden changes, but I actually meant development, like gradual changes over time. So that's why I personally call it as a shorthand intuition of development. And one of the ways, like I said, if you, if you see, because usually NI is paired with another function, and then you can sort of see it, like, like, like I said, when you've got NI with FE, and probably a bit of FI in there as well, but basically NI in the context of NF, the way NS use NI, guiding people, seeing how things... So maybe you could talk, how do you use NI, Joyce? <laughs> this is a very on the spot, not my yeah. natural element. Yeah, but this is the, I will trust. I, I, I thought this was, I thought you'd be talking about this all the while. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. And so you mentioned developing as NI, and I do see that to be the case. Let's go back to NLP and about how, you know, NI is good at knowing how your mind's wired and basically understanding the development of your the patterns in your mind. It's basically NI has an innate understanding of development of patterns, no matter where they are. So it's understanding how things lead up to certain things. So it's almost like it's able to know the ripple effect that leads to things. So it, it's a acutely aware, like it does a lot of background pro processing, but it's able to figure out the ripple effects that lead to eventualities. So it's understanding that everything you see is a symptom of something that has been developing all along. So it's kind of like figuring out what was there all along, if that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, and you can see that in with the NTJs. So Kersey would say that INTJ, I call it NITX, is um, predisposed to the arranger role. And the arranger role is the idea of somebody who's looking at a plan and thinking about how it can go wrong and like the contingency plans where it's like, well, if A happens, then we've got to do B. And then if C happens, then we've got to do D. And it's like thinking ahead. And it's almost like more negativist kind of like just thinking about what can go wrong and a range of contingencies. And mm -hmm. that fits the type, which tends to be a bit critical. INTJ tends to be a bit critical. Um, <laughs> you know, find the holes in things. And they yeah. can also have very strong, t and the way they use TI tends to be negative in that they're very good at finding the holes in arguments, INTJs. Yeah, yeah. Interesting, mm. fascinating. And so, Jonathan, do you have anything to add to the NI section? Hmm. Well, personally, I'm not much of an artist. You see art. Yeah, well, uh, well, I mean, you you have, you have uh, writing potential, though, Jonathan. Oh yes, I'm an excellent writer, but I'm still not much of an artist. Uh, and relates to submissive aspect of NI and romance tales. I take personal offence to that, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. it's all right. You could use work. Okay. Oh, well. well, I'm happy to develop it. The, the main thing is to get input from people who use yeah, the function. So, uh, yeah, the thing with NI is it's always on if you're an INFJ or an INTJ. Uh, so it's constantly, it's really hard to describe. That's another trait of NI. Uh, like, I associate intuition in general with abstraction, abstract thinking, uh, Perhaps imagination as well, subconscious reasoning, all these things. It was all broader than just the normal definition of intuition. It's more like going into the mechanics of intuition and the uh, philosophical thinking and so on. I wouldn't necessarily associate it with faith, I think any type of faith. Uh, it's more like it really has a perceiving function, it really has like seeing things in a particular way viewing the world in a way that other people don't like if i remember hearing somewhere uh that i don't know it could have been told me this could be somewhere else that uh like an se type would be very or can be very aware of their immediate environment like the main was the details of a tree for example where an ni type wouldn't notice it Whereas a more adult NI type would be suddenly quite aware of 
like the details of a tree and stuff, and they'll notice these things. They'll notice things that they never noticed before, even though they've always been there. Whereas, like someone with weak NI or like an STP that's developed their NI, they'll suddenly start thinking in more abstract concepts as they get older. So, yeah, that's how I'm trying to badly describe things. Like <laughs> Joyce, you could like take a clip of this and just that begin at the start, like the first thirty seconds, the body language of Jonathan, like all the things he was doing with his hands, like showing he was going into an NI state, like all of those gestures. Mm -hmm. Brilliant gestures of uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, that was all good because that was like legitimate, yeah. Um, yeah, it wasn't done for effect. <laughs> you there you notice these things when you're doing events with each other for about six years, <laughs> absolutely. There's also a way that NI is put that I enjoy too it's the elephant metaphor. So it's five blind men and the elephant, yeah. it's also in Darian Artie's book where. You know, you have one man feeling different parts of the elephant. Like each man is no noticing like the ear. The other man yeah. has the tail. The other man is riding the elephant. And so you all have a feel of the concept. And the more feelers you get on that concept, the more like almost whole it it becomes. But slowly, like it, yeah, it's kind of like that. Yeah, I think that might be intuition in general. Uh, yeah, it is. I agree. Uh, I agree. I agree. Yeah. Because yeah. it's, it's something that Vanderhoek wrote about, you can have an insight into the relation of things. There's a slight, I, I, I do notice there's a slight bias in Vanderhoek, like his INTP. Like, he described himself as an introvert of thinking type with auxiliary intuition. So mm -hmm. sometimes I can see maybe a bias towards any in him. But yeah. uh, what about it's these also... ones? Okay, go on. Sorry. Oh yeah, uh, it's also in Dario Nardi's book, um, The Elephant. There are yeah. other ways that NI is put too. It's kind of like a glass and then it's defrosting. So the glass is defrosting and when you it defrosts, you see the image clearly through it. So that's how it kind of feels like too. You know? And there's also, it's it's been put like it's a pond and basically the, you're waiting for the ripples to calm down so so the water is completely completely clear and you can see through it and you can kind of tell hmm. if, if that makes any sense it's almost like it it's a settling of of intuition hmm. kind yeah. of. that doesn't do much for me it was a nice <laughs> image but like the pond that like, ai is really hard for me to do because it's like i it's describe hard. it as the fish that doesn't know its wet function like i swim in it but i i, I don't even know i'm wet with ni i yeah. think it may, may I, I might encounter it as something that leads my thoughts in a certain direction before I've thought it might be the way I experience it. Yeah, yeah. As, yeah. As, worth, as worth pointing out that the INTPs, their NI is just as strong as an INFJ or an INTJ. It's just less preferred. They prefer the NE. So INTPs and INFPs, they still have very strong NI. But uh, it's, it's almost like it's more unconscious for them than it is for us. Uh, even though we can barely describe it ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's why I call it the fish's water. <laughs> like the fish doesn't know it's wet. The INTP fish doesn't, the INTP and INFP fishes don't know the wet with NI. And it's like, for example, uh, the equivalent would be INFJs don't know they're wet with FI. Mm. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's cool. So, uh, is it naughty of me to show you TE because, like, you probably both don't like.